Howdy do, folks. So there's the old mountain man I'm talking at you from the back side of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Well, today's survival topic is, has to do with three different things. Well, actually, four, maybe five. I don't know. I'll come up with a couple other things. Y'all know who I, how I am. And, well, first of all, I got this little gunpowder-like substance here, but it is far from gunpowder, but it can be used for it. It's called potassium permanganate. <laughs> How do you like them big words? Well, at any rate, potassium permanganate is used by the British SAS or Special Air Services. It has a multiple use uh, material or compound as it were. It can be used as fire starter. It can be used to add it to water. It can be made into a cleanser or disinfectant for wounds. And it can be used to purify water. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me while I roll me a cigarette. And no, this is not the uh, fancy schmancy tobacco that I once was using. It was, uh, that got a little too expensive. I had to downgrade to a, a pipe tobacco, like a lot of people have had to do. And I stocked up and got about three pounds of tobacco now because it was so cheap. But I also make my own menthol tobacco, but that's another video. Now I've got two or three other videos planned for the near future. Uh, one is going to be for one of my subscribers, Thread for Souls. I'm not going to give away the topic. Basically, because I don't want somebody else snatching it up. Snatching up the idea. And making a video before I do. Yeah. <laughs> well. Let's do a little demonstration. Common everyday ordinary 99.5% anhydrous glycerin which you can get at any Walmart or drugstore or whatever and potassium permanganate which you cannot get at any drugstore yeah and I really wanna give kudos to the SAS of Brits they are some very resourceful people. Now, as a fire starter, potassium permanganate and let's see, I'm gonna try to do this with one drop. One drop of glycerin, let it soak in, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, yeah. and here we go. And like I said before, when the previous video about fire is starting, the more you add to it, the more you feed that fire, the better. Now, a few more drops. And believe you me, you don't want to breathe that stuff. It won't make you see pink elephants, but it'll damn sure put all the noxious smoke there. Yeah. But in an emergency situation where a fire is called for, 
Yeah, you can even signal on snow with this stuff. Won't be purifying any water today or creating any wound solution because I don't know the exact measurements. <coughs> one of the other subjects, you know, as I, I, I got to thinking about one of my videos about food and fire and the reality of it. Well, one of the other realities is fishing. All right. Yeah, you know, aquatic dwelling organisms, they're not quite as sharp as these four-legged critters running around. And they're a whole lot easier to catch. Be a little resourceful and you can make it easy on yourself. Um, one of my suggestions is true turn fishing hooks. True turn hooks these little buggers right here, and no, I don't get compensated for any of my, any of the products that I show. Never do. Because, you know, I don't work for these companies, otherwise I wouldn't be living in a <laughs> camping trailer out in the woods like this. I'd be living in a nice cabin out in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> these true turn hooks, they got a cam action. Sort of a cam action that brings that hook around. You know, fish comes up sniffing around and yeah fish have an extremely sharp sense of smell they can uh, they come up and they start sniffing at this the bait on a true turn hook I think I'll use a size 2 on uh, for this little shoal and tail <laughs> There you go. The true turn hook was invented by a World War II veteran, and it says so right here on the back. True turn hooks are recommended by the U.S. Army for military survival kits. Invented by World War veteran World War II veteran John Campbell. C A M P B E L L. Fort Campbell, Kentucky, was named after this man. Fort Campbell, Kentucky, home of the Screaming Eagles. 101st Airborne. Hoorah! Or hooah! Oh boy. Well, at any rate, these hooks here will catch you a lot more fish and you'll do a whole lot less cussing. And they used to actually say that on the package. You should actually read that on the package. You'll catch more fish and you know there'll be more fish caught and less cussing or something like that. <laughs> and I want to apologize to uh, Mudbuster45 and a couple of the rest of my subscribers because I did delete that one video where I ranted about uh, people uh, certain people on YouTube and my ex-wife, one of my ex-wives, have been married and divorced twice. But that wasn't the whole thing. It was, you know, I was asking for something for nothing and my integrity and my pride just would not let that video stand. I couldn't uh, let that video stay up. I, I've never asked for anything in my life for, for nothing. But anybody that's, you know, got a charitable heart, they, there's a couple of people that was willing to send me some things, and at least three people. One of them offered way before I ever made that video. And I want to thank her. She was one of my greatest customers. She bought five of the Ferrocerium Firestarter rods, and that was a big, big help. Yeah, me 
Miss Sheila, thank you much for your, your past order and your friendship and resubscribing to my channel and all. Appreciate you. A whole bunch. And oh, here is the first air and fire starter rod that I use quite a bit. This is my own personal one. And here's one that uh, well, I had to use others because this one was one of the very first ones I ever ordered and the rod separated from, came out of the handle and recently let's see if that'll show up there's a some adhesive right around the edge there. I used a uh, two ton epoxy resin, Devcon two ton epoxy resin to fasten that in there and now it's in there but good. You know, whenever I do something I try to do it big time and try to do it right. I know my hair ain't cut, I just got tied back. But what I wanted to do was do a little side-by-side -side comparison. I've been using this this rod here for a little over a year and right next to get that evened up it. you can see the wear and tear on it and I like to get it even all the way around so I'll I'll use on this side and that side. I've seen some ferroserum rods with a big flat spot in them. And, but, let me get to do this again. Get that back up there to where it'll show. Yeah, there it is. You can basically yeah, even it up, dress it up. Yeah. This one here is just slightly smaller, uh, but still a noticeable difference. It takes a long time to wear these things out. I mean, really, those of you who smoke and use Beck lighters, you can. Yeah, I'm gonna suggest something that people might not want to do. You know, take a Beck lighter, brand new, just sort of an experiment, and. Take the wind screen, take the windshield off of the little metal curved windshield, and then uh, take out that striker wheel, turn it, turn it up, turn the ladder upside down, and pop that striker wheel out, and take that flint, and set it aside, and take a big lighter that has no that has no fuel and it's been used up, and then take that. Uh, piece of ferrocerium flint out of it. It's not actually a flint, it's a piece of ferrocerium. That's what it is. Same material as this. <coughs> Take it out of there and compare the wear and tear. <coughs> Yuck. Dang smoking. And I promise you. It won't be a heck of a lot of difference between a brand new uh, piece of ferrocerium out of a Beck lighter and the uh, used ferrocerium out of an empty lighter. And as well as all of us smokers and other users of Beck lighter know, they last a long time. 30 days or more, you know, a couple of cartons of cigarettes maybe. Of course, I've not been uh, not been smoking packaged cigarettes. I've not smoked packaged cigarettes in oh my god since maybe 1999 or 2000. And yeah, that's whenever they start you know start going up more and up more and up more. It's a real pain in the butt. And I was told by my stepdad that uh, you need to stock up on tobacco because it's going to go up. Uh, 
And since then, I'm pretty much, uh, oh, uh, I didn't stock up. But anyway, here's a cool little rock that I found at an old Cherokee campsite where it was, you know, there was a Cherokee village there at one time and it was a war hammer, a battle, a little war club head. It, no, it couldn't be used for an axe, it's too blunt. And I suppose it wasn't finished or it was cast aside for something else. This thing here, yeah, you just pick it up and you just know. You know. Some people just pick something up and just know. Just from the feel of it, just sort of a vibe you get from it, you know. And whenever I go back over into Oklahoma and visit with my mentor, one of my mentors, hopefully I get to visit with both of them. Well, uh, I'll give this to Sonny because I gave him a couple other stone uh, war club heads that were a bit more, uh, they looked a lot better. They were real fine, real finely made. They were, they were just really cool, more square and pointed. And they were streamlined and kind of curved. And, Looked like a square hammer head on one end and a, a ice pick. Or all of those picks that those uh, fellers use, those people use that climb uh, on frozen waterfalls. <coughs> oh, well. <sighs> well, that's just about it for the survival video for today, folks. Um, if you want to, you can uh, spread these videos around and let folks know I got these Ferrisir and Firestarter rods for sale. Um, please share my videos on Facebook and any other social media that you might want to share them on. Um, if you don't mind, you know, if you watch them all the way through and you don't mind the content, and meaning the language or whatever, there might be a cuss word or two here and there. But, and I apologize for that. Got a granddaddy long leg spider crawling around on my coffee cup handle. Get off of there, you silly outfit. It's my coffee. God. But, who knows? might just help. I'm running up on 19 minutes so I'm gonna get off of here and as always folks take care of yourselves and be good to yourselves and each other and watch out for them old wolves and sheep's clothing that'll try to deceive you and stab you in the back and just uh, Be good, it's way too much bad in the world, and if we all do what we can to make it a better place, then it'll be a better place. And this is the old mountain man signing off for now from the backside of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Y'all take care, and adios.